good. We are good. You're good to go. We're going. Okay. Hi. 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 It's, you know, it's always funny when I've spent a bunch of time with someone and then we start recording because usually when I start recording with someone, we've spent either zero time together, a little bit of time together. I barely know them or at the very least. I know them and then we got together and then shortly after started recording, but that's, I mean, I've been hanging out with you for 48 hours. It's true. Yeah. And you are a household name at our house. My kids were actually just complaining that my daughter, like I've heard the name Jeremy, like so much this week. So, so wow. yeah, you are, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It, <laughs> There's a balance in there between I'm I'm a little offended, but also she's 12, yeah. right? It's a 12 year old girl. So that's kind of the default response to everything. So I'm also not offended. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't be offended. And it, your, your name never came up in a negative way. We're just we're talking about all of our plans for this weekend. Well, and, yeah. and we, you know, meetings with you a lot. There are meetings. You're, yeah. So. Of course, I'm here because free training day, Midwest. Free training day Midwest, the first one. First yeah. one in Victor and Victor's yeah. over there. You guys killed it. It was great. Had and we had fun. It was, has, we, the, we, has the stress faded? Um, it will after I get a really good night's sleep. Just we need some sleep. You know, we we need to. I need to finish all the cleanup and we kind of just threw everything in the van and yeah, it's, it's can't so, like there's even, there's a car that is in your house right now. Like, right. It's, it's in a parking chaos. garage somewhere. So yeah, once, once all that's done, then, then the stress will be gone and we, oh. there we go. I, I realized that that, uh, mount was just barely touching the, the volume button. Oh, so gotcha. I, had to, I had to make an adjustment. But yeah, so the, the stress will be gone soon when all that's done and then i guess we're going to just start planning for next year that's what you do yeah making, making new stress it goes the time goes so quick it does you know it's, it's it's fascinating to me as i get older how short a year is right when you're a kid a year is forever mm -hmm. and now in my 40s year. a year is it's like it's a year yeah it's nothing exactly and of course, that's ironic that you have fewer of them left. It's crazy how that works. It's, it's, yeah. it's un uh, what's that quote? Youth is wasted on the young. Yeah. It's so unfortunate. Yeah. Now I know your husband mm -hmm. so much more than I know you. Mm -hmm. We've had a few conversations, but I would say 95% of what I know about you has come through him, mm -hmm. but it's not like we sit around and we talk about you, you know, we've never had a meeting that's like, all right, let's work and talk about your life. <laughs> but you and I right now are having a meeting mm -hmm. to talk about you. I, I know you've got a more sports background in your own, right? Yep. And I know that that was a large piece of how and why the two of you connected. Yeah. And uh, I kind of want to know okay. what's going on. When, when did you start training? When I was 12. So I, I never did any other sport or activity really. I, I did 4-H because I had to, I didn't want to, but my grandma was in charge of the horticulture team or whatever. Horticulture and, team? Yeah. Do I don't fight, 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 fight plants, with plants, punch trees. I wish <laughs> that would have been so much better. You know, we had to be able to identify a whole bunch of different trees and bushes and fruits and vegetables and, and be able to like judge them mm. or I don't, I don't know. It's just something I had to do when I was a kid. Yeah. Cause that's, that's what my grandma did. And I always wanted to do martial arts though. Like I would watch Teenage Mutant Ninja, yeah, Ninja Turtles, Karate Kid. Like I never wanted to fight. I was, so I was a very shy, quiet kid. And I think that that's where it, came from that desire because I was the smallest, the youngest person in my entire family. Um, and I would see these characters in these shows and movies that were empowered and 
how could you not want to be that and emulate that? Uh, but my parents would not let me and my brother do martial arts because he had behavior issues and is this, you know, it was the 80s, early 90s, and they thought it would just make him more violent. And so it wasn't. Because he couldn't, you couldn't. Right. Yeah. So, and I, I didn't fight hard for anything. I was told no, and that was it. So. Sure. Um, but then when I was 12, someone came in to do like a temporary martial arts program at my elementary school in the evenings. I think it was just one evening a week or something. It was, I don't even remember how long it went for, but my parents let me and my brother do it. And I loved it. It was show and real. Any memory as to what it was about that that made it different enough in their minds? I think they decided my brother was old enough because okay. he was then at that point he was 14 and I was 12 and he was doing better in school at that time. Um, so we, we both started doing it and when that program ended, the instructor recommended an instructor that had just opened a school in the same style that we would go train with and so we went, my parents let us sign up. So that was really the first sport or activity that I ever did that I wanted to. Um, what do you remember about joining and how that felt? It was just exciting, like a very long time ago, but- Do you remember feeling like it was what you had hoped it would be? Yeah, oh yeah. Like as soon as I got to start throwing kicks and stuff, it was great. Um, and my brother didn't stay with it for very long, but I, I kept going. So, so I did that for five years of so like 12 to 17, um, stayed with the same instructor doing showroom room. And I didn't want to quit. It was, it was a hard, hard thing to look back on because I could never get any of my friends to join. And there was no one that I trained with that was my age. And it was a very small school. Like my instructor, I didn't realize it at the time until I went back and like looked up his on his website for his school now and realized that he just opened his school the year before I started training with him. So it was a brand new school and there just weren't that many students and there was another girl, but she was like five years younger than me. And then there was a woman who was in her forties. I was 17 and she was, she'd come from a Taekwondo background and wanted to do something different. And so, and they so were, they were great. And important. Yeah. And as a teenager, when you're trying to figure out, you know, you, you just know instinctively you need to find your place in the world. And it makes sense that your place in the world would have people that are kind of kind of look like you, right? right. Like your age, et cetera. Right. And and I had a lot of friends. Like when, when I was going into my senior year of high school, um, my friends and I all started getting into theater, which I don't think I would have ever been able to do without martial arts. Because when I went into martial arts, like I was so shy, so incredibly shy. And the thought of getting on stage in front of people, I would have just terrified me. But doing martial arts, being pushed out of my comfort zone, getting up and I hated tournaments. I still don't like doing tournaments, but, um, but that was something I like. I had to do it was part of it. And just being up in front of people doing demos and things like really helped me feel okay with being out in front of people. And so, so yeah, my senior year of high school, was doing theater and was dedicating more time to that. I was kind of a perfectionist with the martial arts, even though I wasn't competitive, but I was very hard on myself. And I would practice at least an hour every day. 
my parents made me like my own little dojo training space in our basement. We had an unfinished basement and they, they put like the, that outdoor carpet on the concrete floor, which is pretty much what I was used to training on. Um, just that thin, thin padding on concrete. And they got like a big mirror to put on the wall. I had a freestanding um, century power wave punching bag. And I just, I trained down there like an hour every day or something. But when, yeah, when I was wanting to do more stuff with my friends, I realized like I couldn't dedicate that much time to it anymore. And I, I guess I felt like if I couldn't dedicate the time to be the very best that I could be at it, then I was just going to take a break. What's what's the smile you're giving me right now? Is that guilt? There's so, there's something there's yeah. something coming through. Well, <laughs> it's it's. I wish I could go back. Regret. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because now I'm like that's so silly. <laughs> like, but I was 17. So. But what's know. important when you're 17 is not important when you're not 17. Yeah. Right. So, and, and, you know, I was very close to getting my black belt. So I, after five years, I was still, I was, um, brown belt. And I think a lot of that time I was only training once a week. So, um, so yeah, so I know I hear people talk about after a couple of years, they got their black belt and things. And like, yeah, I was five years and didn't get my black belt. But, and so I always, I always have that regret that I, left before that but but i i told myself the time i was gonna go back and i did, did. <laughs> it, just, it took 16 years so i had a 16 year break from, and from martial what, arts what were you were you doing anything actively in there right you know you've been, you've been on the side you had excuse me three other episodes recorded today and you've heard from at least two out of the three people, how martial arts kind of threads through other things that are physical, even <coughs> excuse me, yeah. not about combat. Was that at all your story? Um, so I never did any other sport, okay. um, but I kind of tried getting into running and I took um, fitness classes. Mm -hmm. I tried taking like cardio kickboxing fitness classes too. And what, it just, dude, tell me about that. It was the one I tried to take um, first was it was through like a Parks and Rec thing. And it was, there were just too many people in the class. And it was, I don't know, it was, it was almost like too familiar to what I'd been doing, but not to the level I wanted to do it at. And so I just, I have scratched the itch. Yeah. So I was like, I, I just, I can't get into this. Um, but yeah, for a while I really wasn't doing much, and then I I started working in jobs so that were very physical. I think I've never had a desk job. I worked so right out of high school. I went to college for a year, but didn't know what I wanted to be when I when I grow up. Ooh. Yeah, um, so I, I still don't know. What I, I do. I'm just I'm still figuring it out. I've got, I've got a much better idea now than I used to. Um, but yeah, so I started working in retail right after high school at Target. And you just, we just talked to someone else. Yeah. But I also worked in electronics for a while, but you, you weren't uh, there with no, I no. know. No, no, I don't think it was the same city, but, um, I ended up working at Target for 10 years. It turned into it was my first job out of high school, and how many red shirt jokes did you make? Because I I know your 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 nerd cred runs deep. I worked at Staples, yeah. so we had we had a lot of red shirt jokes. Yeah, not that many. No? Okay. It's, I mean, there's not a lot of danger involved in working at Target. At the Target I worked at, well, I worked at three different Targets, but anyway, um, <laughs> so. Yeah, not, not, not like going off to a different planet. So, but anyway, yeah. So I was doing that and realized like I could afford to live on my own. And so 
I ended up doing that longer than I planned. I, I took a break from school. I'd already taken a break from martial arts and I was just working full time. And then I did decide to go back to school. So I um, went back. How long did we get? Um, three, three years, I think. I think I took like a three year break. <laughs> and then I kind of slowly got back into it because I still didn't know what I wanted to be. But, you know, when, when I grew up. But while I was working at Target, I met someone, a good friend of mine, I'm still good friends with. She started working at a nature center in there. It was in Lawrence, Kansas, and she was working at the nature center. And I've always loved animals and nature and, and being outside. I grew up kind of on a sort of farm, <laughs> not not a full farm, but we had a lot of land and we had some cattle in the pasture. We were on the plant team. So. I was. <laughs> punching those trees no um so yeah so she was working at this nature center and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to major in still and I picked environmental science I was going to pick biology but I realized I would have had to take organic chemistry and I hate chemistry and just it's weird that environmental science had less chemistry requirements than biology and i so so that's how i picked my major really was based on the curriculum because I, I looked at all the classes i'm like these all look great like it's all so, and i did i loved it still didn't know what i was going to be when i grew up but i had i had a major picked out and um i was able to do for one some of my college credit for that did an internship at this nature center doing summer camps and teaching people about nature and animals. And we had a bunch of animals there that we would use in programs. I loved it. It was, it was great. Mm -hmm. Not a job that could pay the bills, but at that time I'd worked at Target long enough that I racked up a lot of vacation hours. And so I used my vacation hours at Target to work at the nature center. And because I'm a I'm not as bad as I used to be, no but absolutely was a, a workaholic. Um, but I was doing, I was really doing something I really do. loved. Yeah. And so that, and that was a really physical job. Like I was out, I mean, I was teaching kids to canoe and I got to be in a little kayak to go rescue them when their canoes got stuck places. And um, we were always out hiking around and so very, I taught archery to teach archery during that which was super fun i had to learn archery first and then got to teach it but that was one of my favorite things there too um and so i worked there for three years while i was also working at target to pay the bills <laughs> and and then one of my friends got a job a guy that was volunteering there at the nature center got a job at the kansas city zoo and i was like i didn't know you could do that because I, I remember I had a high school teacher. It was an animal science class that I took in high school. And I remember expressing interest in being a zookeeper at that point. And my teacher was just like, oh, no, that like, don't even bother. Like, it's impossible. Like, don't even, don't even think about that as a possible career option. So I'm trusting my teacher. I'm like, okay, well, he you, must, teacher. I know. I'm like, he must know. And he, he wasn't completely wrong. It is a hard field to get into. You usually, you have to start at the bottom. Usually you start with internships, unpaid internships. A lot of times I was just really lucky because I knew someone and he was able to help me get an interview. And so I started working at the Kansas City Zoo. I had, now they don't do this anymore, but I had two different jobs there and they paid different amounts. So I had a very low paying job in the lorikeet aviary where you work with the little birds that eat the nectar out of cups and uh, you get people. And so I was in charge of babysitting the aviary with these crazy little birds and, and the people that would come in there. And I did that three days a week for a very low you amount of money. People more than birds. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but 
Um, and then my other two days a week there, I was working part-time for slightly more pay, um, just as a an extra keeper in the kid zone area. So we had we had a bunch of different animals, including snakes, and we did the bird show, and we had camels and goats. And there were some monkeys and lemurs and meerkats, and so a lot of a lot of different things. Yeah. So I only had to do that for I think six months before a full time position opened up, and then I was just able to get on that team full time. So it was kind of crazy. I feel very lucky that everything's happened just because I knew someone and had relationships with people. And everything that happens professionally requires relationships. Yeah. And anything beyond an entry level position, and unfortunately now, even the good entry level positions, even the unpaid internships go to people who know people. Yeah. Right. And, it, and it's why I, I get on younger folks when they, they don't want to network. Right. And they don't want to build relationships. And they don't want to go, well, you know, why would I go do that? Well, because you don't know who you're going to meet. Yeah. And if anybody out there has been part of this audience for a long time, we know that who we get on the show leads to who else we get on the show. Right? Like, this has been network. Yeah. I wouldn't know you if it wasn't for this show. <laughs> right. I wouldn't have met you if it right. wasn't for this show. Right. I wouldn't be in Kansas right now right. if it wasn't for this show. Yeah. It's crazy. Network. Yeah. I don't know which camera we're using yeah. right now. Network. Talk, talk to other humans. It's not always fun. But <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I ended up working as a zookeeper for seven years. Um, I did after, after I got my full-time position there, I just quit Target. So, so for the first time in a long time, I only had one job, but it was, it was intense. Um, but I loved it. I was there. Seven years. So, yeah, and I became one of the main uh, trainers in the bird show. So, again, I was on stage in front of people and working with these crazy animals. And um, something, again, I don't think I would have had the guts and courage yeah. to do without that martial arts background and then getting into theater and... But you said you said a 16 year hiatus. So it sounds like right about this time. Is that when yes. martial arts came back into the picture? Yeah, it okay. was. I think I'd been a zookeeper for four years okay. at that point, four or five years. And it was actually at the zoo. I was on a lunch break talking to an intern. We were, I, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but somehow, like, I got onto the topic of how I used to do karate. And I was... Was this the thing you told everyone? No. I used to do karate. No. Okay. No. I don't know. I don't even remember how it came up because I kind of like pushed it, you know, to the back and something I didn't bring up much because it did make me sad. And so when I brought it up, I, I, did, I had this like wave of sadness. This was also right after I finished, um, I finished breastfeeding my youngest, my son. So I had two kids during the time, during those five years, um, I actually got pregnant with my, my daughter very soon after I started that job. And so for five years, I had either been pregnant or breastfeeding and it, it kind of hit me like, I, I can be me again. I can have my body back because it very much felt like it was not mine. I was just, it was just for my kids. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it was just like this light bulb went off and I, I realized how much I missed it and how much it was a part of me. So I went home and I started looking at martial arts schools near me and I found one um, that did karate and taekwondo and judo kind of a mix of things and so i i filled out the little you know get more information thing and immediately got a call i was not expecting it i got a call from the instructor and like okay let's set up your free trial okay so got got back into uh, martial arts and did get a black belt i started back at, at white belt because 
they said I could start with my brown belt if they knew my old instructor. And but I'm like, no, I'm, it's been 16 years. And yeah, so I just, I felt more comfortable starting back at the beginning. So, so yeah, but it only took me three years to get my black belt, but I was there three to five nights a week. I don't think only, I don't think we need to say only three years if you were trained in that office. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so I was there a lot. So talk to me about the first bit, the first few days, weeks, months, you know, because that, that realization that your body was no longer, I guess, on loan mm -hmm. in full to your children and this part of you that you had put on hold and missed for that long, right? We've heard this piece of this story from quite a few people who they train for a period of time, right? Five years when you're 17 is a long time. Five years when you're in your 30s, not such a long right. time. And the fact that your time away was more than three times the length, excuse me, that you've yeah. been training, yeah. and you still never shook that longing yeah i guess is the right word for it so to to get back in comes with a lot of of hopes and maybe expectations mm -hmm. so what was that like getting back in it just felt right like it, it wasn't scary like i was not at all no, no, not no, really okay. like yeah, because of that, by that point, I'd done lots of scary things. You were hanging out with animals that could eat you. Yeah, you know, I was, I was so taking good. care of a leopard every day that if I wasn't careful about making sure the doors are locked, she would have, in a heartbeat, mm. sorry for the listening, she would have made me not alive anymore. Um, <laughs> she would have unalived. Strongest fight force yeah. probably can um, no, I think that's probably lions. Like, like PSI, like. I think it's still lions or tigers, actually. But no, leopards, they're just scary. They're very scary. They're very, very quiet, very quick. And I'll just, yeah, yeah. No, cheetahs, fine. I, t I tell people, I took care of the cheetahs too. I'm pretty sure I could have taken them one at a time in a fight. So they're only like 90 pounds at the most. And uh, they don't, they, they aren't built for a fight. They are built for running. They are not built for fighting. It, it usually takes them 20 minutes to uh, kill their prey by suffocating them. Oh, so when, when I was in the unrelated, at all to arts, <laughs> when I was in the, um, you know, you, you, you go to any kind of animal enclosure here in the States and it's, it's double walled and they make mm -hmm. sure there's no way you can put your arm right. through it. And here I am in Belize and it's basically a single uh, run of chicken wire. Yeah. And there's a leopard and it's looking at me and it's going, and I'm yeah. just going, I would, wow. I wouldn't feel good about that. No, no, that was. Yeah. But no, we, we didn't go in with our cheetahs. There are places that have hand raised cheetahs that the keepers go in with. and. We weren't allowed to do that. Ours were not hand raised. They were still raised by the moms. Um, and then they came to us after they were, they were weaned, like 18 months old. Um, but still, they they were, they were whips. I, I had to rescue them from a big snapping turtle one time. There was a big snapping turtle in their exhibit. And there were three of them, but the snapping turtle would have won. So I had to I had to lure them all in so I could go out and put the stamping turtle in a crate and take it back down to the river. Um, anyway, <laughs> my husband my husband is over there dying of laughter because he he's heard many random animal stories. So snapping turtle. Yeah. <laughs> I was way more afraid of the snapping turtle than I was of the cheetahs, but but yes, they are, they are. But it was fine. It's, it was one of those things where you know how like like you're about to do something that you know could be very dangerous, 
I don't know if you've had this happen. And like you're present in the moment and then suddenly you're just on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't really remember how I got the snappy turtle into the crate. I just know suddenly it was just in the crate. I was by myself. I didn't, <laughs> didn't have anyone else helping me. So that was lucky. Well, I'm, I'm that glad was, just yeah. Like, it's either really fast. I don't know what I did, but I did it. Yeah. So, so we've got this background of martial arts that gives you the willingness. I'm not necessarily going to call it the confidence. That's for you to say. Yeah. But the willingness to embrace some of these more intimidating experiences, and I imagine they happen constantly at the zoo. Because if if, if you're dealing with animals that can kill you and people, that's a, that's an intense combination. Because most of us are terrified of people in general in some yeah. way, right? And so it's a zoo, so there's a lot of them. Yeah. And things with big teeth. Yeah. And it went fine. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah, the only injuries I ever got at the zoo were um, like pinching my hand in a gate or had a, a big metal drain that I picked up from the floor so I could hose everything down into it. I leaned it against a wall and nudged it with my hose and it hit, I don't know, I have a scar on my hand somewhere where it fell and hit me, I had to go get stitches. And of course, when you go and get stitches and you're wearing a zookeeper outfit, yeah. the people at the urgent care are like, what happened? I'm like, well, it's, it was crazy. This floor drain fell on my hand. So disappointed because they they were expecting. Could have talked when you fought a bear. Yeah, I don't want to start rumors like that. But <laughs> so so yeah, no, my injuries were all from very silly silly things that were not exciting at all. So no, the animals were fine. So the zoo training, black belt, and then what? Yeah, so. So I did leave the zoo after seven years. Um, I was actually, because I was teaching martial arts at that point, like on the side, obviously, and working full time at the zoo, trying to be at the dojo when I could. Uh, being a zookeeper pays very little money. Teaching martial arts pays very little money. Um, so I actually was looking into becoming a teacher um, because even school teacher, like school a middle, teacher. yeah, like Very a middle, well yeah. yeah, I wanted to be a middle school science teacher and I would have made at least 10,000 a year more than what I was making at the zoo, um, at least like starting out. And that's after seven years at the zoo. So I was looking into that. Uh, you know, there are no, no you're just, you're just still with children, yeah. but, but I like children and that's one of my favorite things when I worked at the nature center and when I was at the zoo was teaching kids about nature and animals and engaging and like sparking that, that curiosity and excitement um, and making those connections. So, so I was like, I like teaching. And so I was looking into that and I got into substitute teaching and I, I left the zoo got into substitute teaching and was working as much as I could at the martial arts school. Um, and then COVID happened. So COVID uh, threw my plans off a little, so the school's all closed. And, and then even as I started to reopen, my friends that were teachers were not happy. And I just decided Okay, maybe I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So I was working out at a kickboxing gym at the time. I started doing that before I got my black belt as just another way to get in shape because um, it's been talked about a lot that um, as, as you get good at doing your martial arts and your body does things the most efficient way. And so like I, I want to be in like the best shape ever and just practicing my martial arts I was you know kind of plateauing and so there was a 
kickboxing fitness gym close to me. I was like, that looks fun. Like, and it, it did, it challenged me. It was different. All of like the workouts were always different. And so I got in, into the best shape of my life when I was working out there. I think I lost 30 pounds in six months. Yeah. I gave up soda and, and junk food and stuff that helped too. But that was another thing working at the zoo. Um, it was not the healthiest because I was, I was working again, your body does Stealing things food from the, the most. Work. So not from <laughs> the animals, but <laughs> oh, I, I thought about it sometimes. Like the quality of food that they get is so good. Like I would be feeding the gorillas and like the produce that they would get just so good. I did not steal it though. I, there were times I was like, that broccoli looks really good. But I did not, I did not steal their food. But <laughs> what I did take <laughs> was donated food. A local grocery store would donate all their like bakery stuff yeah. that didn't sell that day. Or that was like, we'd get cakes sometimes that had like weird mistakes or were just oddly racist for some reason. I, I, I'll tell you that story later. But... <laughs> Yeah, so we would we would get maybe that'll be Patreon. I'll, I'll tease that. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't think I have a picture of it anymore. But um, but we get all these donated baked goods, and I don't know if the grocery store thought they were going to animals, or like we'd never feed the garbage to our <laughs> animals. But I'm poor and I'm hungry. So oh, I'm gonna eat Let it. Let them eat cake. Yeah. So I was eating garbage all day. The old garbage. Yes. And watching the animals I'm taking care of eating like really good quality, like healthy food, and I'm just shoving donuts. You're, you're aware of the contrast in this moment, I imagine. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so after after leaving that job, where I mean, I was I was burning tons of calories every day, but I wasn't giving my body the fuel that it needed. So, so I was able to get in a lot better shape after that and continuing martial arts and working out at the gym. And, and at the gym, I was also, uh, there were weights and things. So it wasn't just body weight stuff or bag work. Um, there was, we did stuff with dumbbells and kettlebells. And so I had more muscle than I'd ever had before and, and really like that. And so, so after the schools closed with COVID, the gym closed for a few months, like everything else. Um, but they were offering Zoom classes and like had online stuff, which was not the same, but I was still doing it. I was like, I need to do something. Yeah, I need to do something. Um, and when it reopened, it, I was kind of hesitant to go back because my son has a heart condition and I was very nervous about COVID and I didn't want to, I was very healthy. My family was very healthy, but like, I didn't want to introduce anything. So it took me a little while to get back into the gym and I be always wearing a mask and it's not fun doing that intensive workout with a mask, but but I went back and I was glad I did. And then they talked me into working there. So I ended up doing that for a couple of years um, and started still during the time where the trainers had to wear masks. So it was super fun, good times, but it was good for me. I got to, I, I was not at the martial arts school anymore. My instructor stopped teaching and I was then in the process of going through divorce. So all sorts of life changes yeah. during, during the, the fun year of 2020. Um, but yeah, I was at this gym and so I was still getting to teach people. Now I was teaching adults, not children, which I had mainly taught children. It's different. It's, I, I enjoy working with kids more. Why? It's just more fun and you don't have to break as many bad habits because mm -hmm. <laughs> they haven't formed them yet. Yeah. So, um, but it was good. I was still helping people and 
and teaching people stuff and and I was improving my own health and so so that was good and but I did miss um, I did miss training in, in traditional martial arts I started taking lightsaber um, classes around that time too uh, randomly my friend who was also a trainer at the gym she was like I found this lightsaber class you want to come try it with me I'm like yes who, who doesn't yeah who doesn't want to swing a lightsaber exactly so we started taking these stage combat lightsaber classes for fun we got to perform at comic-con um and like at a, a royals baseball game we got to dress up in cosplay and it was just super fun and um, you're not at all no, no. Well, I, I want to make sure everyone understands. I, I don't have a Lord of the Rings map of Middle Earth on my arm. Yeah, um, it's a great tattoo, though. It, it's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, we were doing these lightsaber things, and um, for whatever reason, I started posting videos on TikTok. Well, we're not not for whatever reason. I started posting videos. Because it was the on, pandemic, and that's what it we all was. Did. We all it really, maybe not everyone. It, but a lot of us did. So it started though because my boss at the gym was harassing all of us to post more on social media, to like to to get you know the gym like more attention and just post stuff. And so I started. Because I'm not a big social media person. I started with like push-up challenges and I found these. I was like, oh, that's fun. Okay, because I had no idea for content and I'm like, I want to get my boss off my back. So I'll just do these silly little videos and I use TikTok for their um, sound clips and editing. I never thought anyone would follow me on TikTok. Um, so I wasn't even thinking about being on TikTok. I was like, I'm just going to use this and then post it on How my- long how I, long were you? I was, I I was you know wrong. What? I don't think I'm not going to, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll foreshadow a little bit. You couldn't have been more wrong. I know. Yeah, it was funny. Um, so, yeah, I started, then I got people's attention, I guess, on TikTok right. by playing with my lightsaber. And I also, actually, I think the first first video I did that got, the most attention was a bow staff thing. I did it to, there was this little sound clip that was like, dun, dun, dun. Like it, it was kind of fast. And I was like, I bet I could do like a bow staff combo and match the beat because it was pretty fast. And so I just did that for fun. And, and so that, I got a lot of followers from that. I'm just like, okay, I guess people on TikTok have found me. And, and I ended up making like a whole bunch of friends. And again, it was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So wasn't really seeing people in real life so much. Like I was at the gym, but again, I'd see you know, the same 10 people every day. And my lightsaber class was also the same five people once a week. So I um, met all these other martial artists and other people play with lightsabers and things and there was there was a good mix actually i found this group of people that did martial arts of some sort or had an interest in it but then also really you know like the nerd the nerd side of things i had all these star wars friends you know i'm not the most knowledgeable star wars person like i've always enjoyed it i've always liked it and I don't consider myself like a super fan or anything like that, like my, my husband, but he he knows all the stuff. So I ask him, but I've, I've read a few of the books, but I don't know all of the lore, but it's just something that's fun. I enjoy it and I enjoy playing with lightsabers. So, so I had all these friends and that's how I met my husband. He was, he was one of my friends on TikTok and we bonded over our love of martial arts. No one's going to watch these videos. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was, he was one of the, one of the first people that started interacting with me on TikTok. So he was, he was. <laughs> Third, twice. 
<laughs> yeah, he thought I was two different people. So, because sometimes I, I would post lightsaber things and then I'd post other other things. One of my things was I was talking about my zoo animals because I had I had a bunch of paintings on the wall behind me that were animal prints, like paw prints and snout prints. And um, so I had these things on the wall and somebody asked me in a video like, what's what is with the artwork back there and so i did a little video talking about the zoo animals it worked with and he thought zoo karen and lightsaber karen were two different people and he tried to follow me twice to be very confused that he was already following me um but yeah and then he uh he used martial arts to to lure me to visit him in New Jersey. <laughs> it does, yeah. The only thing that makes the story not horrendously creepy is the fact that you two were married. Yeah. If, 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 it was, if that was not what had happened, you were not it's, coming it, off well. It could, it could have gone bad, yeah. but, but it didn't. I was very careful. All was, of our first dates were about if you were going to get out. Yeah, married. which one of us was the serial killer? That was the joke. Um, so, so yeah, he invited me because he knew I was, I didn't have a place to train. I, I didn't have a dojo at the time. And he's like, well, my home dojo in New Jersey is having a 35 year anniversary thing. And, and it was, you know, they're going to have like, so, like a day of seminars and whatnot. And he's like, you should come. And I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> Why not? We've been talking for a long time, and we knew, we, we we knew a lot of the same people on TikTok, and and then I made sure that like all my friends here in Kansas knew where I was going to be. One of my friends, she's like, we need to have a secret code. You need to text me like one smiley face on the first day to let me know you're okay, and then the next day two smiley faces, and so we had this. We had a thing. I totally forgot when I was there, and she had texted me like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, we're just we're having a really great time," and I <laughs> forgot. But um, yeah, it's not a very so good thing. yeah, no, but I was fine. <laughs> I didn't get murdered. N no one got murdered. So that's what you yeah. Like so, uh, but it was great. I every time I went to visit Victor in New Jersey, um, there was always two days at least at the dojo, at least two days at the dojo. So um, yeah, we did that for a year. We did the long and, distance and what, thing what for was, a year. What was it like meeting someone where, where a large portion of that initial connection was martial arts? That was a thing that you had in common. You know, we're in your school, right? <laughs> yeah. Like obviously this is a big part of your life. Why did that feel like? Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we spoke the same language. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that it took him longer to adjust to. The Because suddenly, like, I understood what he was talking about. Or I understood, like, why he needed to be at the dojo. Or... And you weren't used to that. No, <laughs> yeah. So, um so for me, it was just, it was great. Like I'm with someone who gets it and we just clicked in so many ways. And even though very different backgrounds, like he, he and I, um, the only you know, thing we had was karate. We both started karate at age 12. Mine was five years earlier, so I'm five years older, but um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, it was just, it was fun. It was exciting to start getting back into it. We would do um, challenges. We, we started doing with a bunch of other people that you know, we started doing a 100 day uh, forms challenge that so Andrew started it. And we've done it like three times, I think, since then, but it was cool that we were we were still on you know I was in Kansas he was in New Jersey but we're interacting in these groups and still doing martial arts together far apart together. 
And and so what's kind of what's you know we're we're, we're coming we do have a because I have a plane so yes. we do have a little bit of a of a time constraint here. But I want to talk about the school, right? Because when we when we look back over everything that you've talked about, you know, we see a threat of martial arts certainly even even when you weren't training a regret or missing it, mm -hmm. you know, the, like, like, I'm going to put words in your mouth, you know, that yeah. the part of you was gone, right? Yeah. Like that's, you know, sure, like, that absolutely. Seems appropriate. Yeah. But then also this other component of teaching and children and sharing the things that you loved with others, right? That That's kind of the common theme. And everything you've talked yeah. about that you've done was something that you enjoyed became a job. And then you're sharing that information. Yeah with others. I mean, that, yeah. that's every single thing you've, you've done. Maybe, maybe not target, yeah. but uh, I, think it's I, I, I bet it was in there. Yeah. Okay, right. So <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't surprise me that the two of you opening a martial arts school happens. And so what's it been like? You know, it's been just over a year for you. Yeah. How does that feel? It's exciting. It's crazy. It's something I, again, not, not a plan for when I grow up. Um, but now it is and currently, that's what I, I want to be when I grow up. I want to be a martial arts instructor and run a school with my husband. So, um, so doing that, I still have a full-time job. I'm working in retail at a, at a pet store. Um, so I get my animal fixes. Pet tracks. Yeah. And I'm making enough money to pay the bills and, um, He's growing this. Yep. So I mean, he's he's doing this more of his full time thing and doing side things. I'm doing this as my side thing, but the hope is that this can be both of our main thing. Um, and but you're working with kids. Yes. So I, I get to where I even I started a toddler program that I, I got inspired to do that from someone I met at Marshall Summit um, last year, and. Can do that um and so we started a toddler toddler and me program so it's that's been really great i love that I do that twice a week um got a little kids program called the wolf cub program for five to seven year olds our youth program so so i love it i love getting to teach with my husband and we kind of share the responsibilities there's some classes that i lead and he there to assist and then some that he leads and I'm there to assist. So it's a good balance. Awesome. And, and you've probably heard me ask this question a bunch of times. So what's next? You know, we sit down five years from now. What okay. are you hoping that you're telling me that's changed and updated? Okay. So my dream. Yeah. Dream. Go big. <laughs> Put um, it out there. I want to combine my my zookeeping with my <laughs> with my teaching so the dream is to have people fight cheetahs no no so that, how would, many, that wouldn't be nice how many to the, could you it, wouldn't, fight? it wouldn't be nice to the cheetahs um <laughs> for cheetahs they're whips anyway what if it's more than one cheetah and they don't really fight like that though they're they still sometimes brothers will hunt together but they're still Eh. Which not, so you not take fighting cheetahs. No, um, but I want to have, if we are able to expand our school, this is probably more than five years out, but if we ever have a big enough space, I would love to have like a little lobby area with some animals that I could do programs with. So imagine like a little, uh, Flexible like a ferret workshop. Okay. <laughs> My husband doesn't even know about this idea yet. Yeah, that, um, uh, oh, I could tell <laughs> simply from that noise. That that was the noise of what? <laughs> this is news to me. Just, just Flexible ferrets. like a ferret. Yeah. Are we gonna stay with the alliteration? Because I like that one. I I don't have that many. Flexible yeah, like I'll have to I'll have to strong work. like a Something. Yeah, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Powerful but, like a panther. Okay, but I'm not gonna have a panther in my dojo. <laughs> it's not happening. I could have a house cat. We could, we could pretend. Um, oh, okay. But you know, I, I could 
what a mess. frogs. You could do a little workshop on jumping and yeah. that. So, so I'm, I'm pretty good at anything I do with the kids. I can relate animal facts into, and we do a lot of animal movements mm. in, in my little kids' classes, but it all relates. Like when I'm teaching um, break falls, you're a turtle. Go into your turtle shell, roll back on your turtle shell, and then slap your penguin wings because you're a turtle with penguin wings for whatever reason. Yeah. Because they, of, don't know. they don't know. And it is it's only, the only thing I can think of that made sense. But anyway, so so my dream would be to have, have my little dojo zoo that people could come and look yeah. at for free because it's a pet store I work at. That is what a lot of parents do around here, when, especially when the weather is bad and there's no school. We get so many people that come in with little kids to the pet store. Sure. They are not there to buy anything. They're just there to look at the animals and give their kids something to do to entertain them for 15, 20 minutes in air-conditioned space. So that's something I, I would love. The marketer love. in me doesn't have an issue I didn't. I didn't think he would. Yeah. Bringing kids in right. Florida. Right. Come in, see the see the the JoJo Zoo, and then people could book birthday parties and things, and I could give animal talks, and we could do movements based on on those animals, and you can work karate into it or not. I'm big. I'm really big on movement and helping kids work on things like balance and um, things that could help them with martial mm -hmm. arts but could just help them in life. So. That's great. We'll, we'll, we'll see if that happens. I, I look <laughs> I forward so. to recording future content with you <laughs> yeah. that involves animals. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to hold out hope for a cheetah. Okay. I don't, I don't yeah. know in what way. I don't want to fight the cheetah, but just. Yeah. Right, like. Tell me wouldn't be the best episode ever if we're sitting there and just, you know, a big cat just kind of comes up and is like, like right here. Like, that would be the best. So that's what, yeah. that's, what, that's my dream. That's my five-year dream for you. Okay. I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. not, not with me. But. Well, then maybe it'll just be a ferret. I could get a really big ferret. <laughs> If people want to find you, your school, et cetera, online, maybe find your, your TikTok videos. That... I don't I don't post anything anymore. I'm, I have not been active on social media for You're still there. I am Saw still there. Yesterday. Yeah. I don't remember what my name is right now. Karen Ninja. But I don't know. Ninja, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, you can you can contact Victor at whistlekick.com. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I about the school name? School, so Wolf, Wolf Martial Arts, it's um, KC Karate Jiu Jitsu dot com. Yeah. Again, we'll, we'll get that stuff later. If anyone tries to contact me, I'm probably not going to get back to you in a, a month. <laughs> so contact I, I'm busy. Yeah. yeah. No, my, it's my husband takes care of all that. Well, thank you. Free training day, Midwest went awesome. Uh, there's a there's a list for that if you're in. Well, quite a few of us came in from away, so I won't even say like if you're from yeah. the local area because you could come here. You could just come here. So we'll get that linked up in in the show notes as well, so you can get informed if you want to join for free training day, Midwest in the future. And I think that's a great place. Thanks. Cool. <laughs>